Welcome back to Sun Kissed Field on this gorgeous Monday night in Tampa Bay as the 14 and 8 Houston Astros take on the 14 and 8 Tampa Bay Rays. We see right fielder Justin Durden mentally preparing himself in the dugout. He's going to make his major league debut today. Listed at third in the Astros' top 10 prospect list provided by the player metrics of MLB The Show. Highly anticipated debut here today for the young right fielder. Not often you see the number 84 among any players in the field. So we'll see if Durden's debut is one to remember. Taking the hill for the Rays, who have been in a bit of a cold snap lately, losing three of their last five, is going to be Marcus Stroman. Stroman's off to a fantastic start to the year. Posted a 1.19 ERA over 30.1 innings. He said great command, only walked five while striking out 24. And really, in his first year in Tampa Bay, has put together the kind of start to a season that may see him stay in the Cy Young conversation well into the summer. Corey Jolks, designated hitter, rookie from Texas, will lead us off. And the first pitch from Stroman is going to be popped to right, drifting foul, and is going to get foul. So a long strike there. 1-2 to Jolks is a check swing that he holds off on. Tampa, despite their struggles of late, is maintaining their grip on first place in the competitive American League East. Though only by a half game over Baltimore, who's having their best start to a season in quite some time. Jokes takes a splitter outside and works the count full. So an early payoff pitch here for Stroman. Fastball is lined to first. Yandy Diaz is there all the way. Quick reactions by the Rays' first baseman as we look at the Houston lineup. Jordan Alvarez hitting third is off to one of the best starts in the majors this year. He's got eight homers and a 372 average, both of which place him second in the American League and second in the majors entirely behind Teoscar Hernandez. As Michael Brandley, longtime major league veteran, stands in with a 3-2 count. And looks at called strike three, a splitter right down the middle. Pitch location actually wasn't that great, but must have caught Brantley off guard there. So Stroman records his second out of the inning, and here is Alvarez. He's going to bloop the first pitch he sees to left. The Rays do have a shift on, so that one's going to get foul. but had it been fair, he might still be running. So the count goes to 2-2 two and two on Alvarez. Swing and a miss. A good splitter there by Stroman. Fooled the fearsome left fielder. And the Rays end up with a 1-2-3 top half of the first. So we'll head to the bottom half with your score. Houston 0, Tampa Bay 0. Taking the hill for Houston today will be Framber Valdez. Valdez is off to a really rough start this year after a truly fantastic 2022. He had one of the best seasons in Houston Astro history. Recording the most consecutive quality starts ever with 25, which is a pretty absurd number to think about. But so far this year, he has just been all over the place with his command and has not been missing many bats. So we'll see if he can bounce back here today against a good raised lineup. He does get Wander Franco to swing at a sweeping curve low. And then fools him with another sweeping curve. So quick strikeout for Valdez there. He has not had many of them this year. So that's a good start for him. Next hitter, Chris Bryant, will chop one up the middle. Bryant has shown a penchant for hitting homers early in his Tampa Bay season, but no such luck there as he grounds out meekly to Valdez, so a quick two outs for the Rays as we look at the starting lineup. We see Jan Gomes and Harold Ramirez getting some playing time today. Off days for Salvador Perez. And for Brandon Lau... While Ramirez is a versatile fielder and is playing right field today, Lau, normally starting at second, ends up getting the day off and allowing Ian Happ to play second, whereas he would often play the outfield, as Arenado takes a sweeping curve low. 
And then swings over another sweeping curve. So good movement on Valdez's pitches early on. And despite his struggles, he couldn't ask for a better start to his day. So the Rays go 1-2-3 as well in the bottom of the first. And we'll head to the top of the second. Still tied at zero. Here is the man of the hour today, Justin Durden, making his Major League debut as we called out at the top of the broadcast. He's going to swing through a fastball for the first pitch that he sees. And the slurve catches him going a little too far. Couldn't quite check his swing. Looked like the pitch might be in the strike zone anyway. So Durden is out on strikes. Upon further review, that slurve was a bit inside. So it would have been ball three, but no such luck for the Astros and for their young outfielder. Jose Abreu will stand in next. And fly one to center. Manuel Margot is tracking it all the way and settles under it easily. He'll make the play, and Abreu is retired. Abreu, longtime Chicago White Sox, who's now in his first year with Houston, and hasn't gotten off to the start that I think many were expecting, or certainly in Houston many were hoping for, as Alex Bregman steps in and fouls one away. Abreu only hitting in the low 230s or so. A couple homers, which he has had a knack for through the years, but... I think the Astros are hoping he'll get going as Bregman looks at a slurve just out of the zone. So Stroman will have a payoff pitch here with two outs and nobody on here in the second. And another swing and a miss from an Astros hitter. Stroman fools him with the sinker. He's shown no shyness in mixing all sorts of pitches for third strikes here. And he uses the sinker for the first time today for a strikeout. So the Astros are out of the second. We'll head to the bottom half, still tied at zero. Yandy Diaz will lead us off in the bottom half of the inning. Normally doesn't hit in the four hole, but I think with a lineup as versatile as the Rays is, particularly against left-handers, manager Kevin Cash is just kind of putting pieces together in a way that may appear to us to be willy-nilly, but I'm sure has a lot of data and science behind it as Diaz fouls a pitch away. He'll chop one to third. Bregman's got it all the way. He throws on to first and retires Diaz. Very minimal contact from either side so far today. It's almost like we're playing wiffle ball. Randy Rosarena will step in and head back to the dugout just as quickly after swinging through a sweeping curve. That curve has been really, really mystifying the Rays hitters early on. And another off-speed pitch does the same as Jan Gomes swings through a 3-2 slider. So the Rays are out of the second. We head to the third looking for our first base runner of the day, as it is still 0-0. David Hensley will step in. Hensley playing second base for the Astros today. Another one of their younger players. He'll swing over a cutter after taking a sinker out of the zone. Two and two is the count on Hensley. Two two fastball freezes him up. 94 miles an hour. Excellent location. Stroman has yet another strikeout. And Hensley is retired. Next up for Houston will be Mauricio Dubon. Dubon chops the first pitch. He sees right back to Stroman. Excellent fielding for. A man who has been dubbed the cat in the past. So those reflexes serve him well there as he retires Dubon for the second out of the inning. Martin Maldonado will try to keep the Astros alive. Maldonado won the gold glove in 2017 and is a longtime veteran backstop. Both he and Jan Gomes have some stories to tell, I'm sure. Maldonado is going to get the Astros on the board with a 1-2 bloop to left. Did not hit it particularly well, but hit it in a spot where nobody was. So the Astros have their first hit and first base run of the day. And in fact, the game as a whole has its first hit. With two outs here in the third. Corey Jolks will follow. And he'll line one to left. That'll get down past a diving Franco. So all of a sudden, the Astros are in business here in the third. As Michael Brantley will step to the plate with two men on and a chance to cash in the Astros' first run of the day. He'll fly the first pitch he sees to center. Hit it pretty well, but Margot's got it all the way. Makes the play and ends the inning on behalf of Stroman and the Rays. So a couple two-out singles go for naught. We head to the bottom of the third, still tied at zero. 
Harold Ramirez will line the first pitch he sees through the hole between first and second. So the Rays have their first hit of the day. And for as dominant as these pitchers looked through their first couple of innings, both perfect games and no hitters are dashed quickly. So Ian Happ will step in, trying to keep a little bit of a rally going here. He'll check his swing. First base umpire says he did not go. So that'll move the count to two and one against Happ. The switch hitting outfielder who's playing infield today. He swings over a sweeping curve. That pitch continues to befuddle the home team hitters. And he'll chase a sinker to no avail. So Happ is retired. Valda is looking very sharp in the early going here. Manuel Margot will step in with a 3-1 count. I think he's going to be taken all the way here. And indeed he is. And he takes outside, so that curve misses. And so the Rays get their first walk of the day. And second base runner of the inning as they turn the lineup over. So let's see if Wander Franco and company can come through with something here. Franco steps in with a 1-1 count. Gets a curve that stayed up and was one of, honestly, the best curves that the Raves have had a chance to hit so far today, but he fouls it away. Too early on it. And then he's going to take a pitch inside, and it plunks him. So tough break for the Astros there, and not what Valdez wanted with a 1-2 count up. So Chris Bryant will have the bases loaded with one out and a chance to deliver here for Tampa Bay. He has raked against lefties in his career. So we'll see if he can deliver, but he cannot as the sweeping curve catches him way off guard, seemed to buckle his knees. And Valdez has yet another strikeout. So it'll be up to Nolan Arenado for the Rays' hopes in the third. He steps in with a 1-1 count. Does not offer at another curve. Valdez is burning those in there. So two and one's the count in favor of the Rays third baseman. Gets a fastball right down the middle and laces it to left. That's a base hit. One run will score. Alvarez throws well from left and dotted one up there. So Margot probably made a good decision sticking in third base. But the Rays do get on the board first here. The base hit from Nolan Arenado. Sat back on that sinker and squared it up, laced it to left. Yadi Diaz will be next up, and he will offer at a curve. So just as quickly as he steps to the plate, he is retired. But the Rays do scratch a run across. They string together a couple hits and benefit from a walk and a hit-by-pitch to take a 1-0 lead into the fourth. Jordan Alvarez, always a threat to Homer, will step in. Stroman did not locate that pitch where he wanted to, I'm sure, but it's fouled away. Sinker stayed way up, or I think it was a splitter, actually. Next pitch is indeed a sinker, and he gets Alvarez to swing over it. So Alvarez has been retired via the strikeout for the second time today. Justin Durden will step in looking for his first hit in his major league career. He also was a strikeout victim his first time up. He'll foul away the first pitch he sees. And then take a splitter low and outside, so he's worked the count full. We'll see what Stroman goes to. Plenty of pitches in his repertoire, and he's been unafraid to use them. Fastball inside would have been ball four, but Durden could not hold up. The home plate umpire is going to ring him up. Says he did not check his swing successfully. So Stroman has his second strike out of the inning. Jose Abreu will try to keep the Astros alive in the fourth and take a pitch outside. Sinker misses low. So Abreu's got a good hitter's count here. Stroman got to be careful not to completely groove one here. He actually throws what would have been ball four way inside, but Abreu is up to the task and fouls it away. So we'll go full. 3-2 to Abreu. Good slurve. Abreu just gets a piece. 3-2 again. Fouled away again. 93 mile an hour fastball up in the zone. We'll see what Stroman goes to here. Splitter gets Abreu to chop one to first. Diaz handles it all the way and puts Abreu away himself. So Stroman is through another inning successfully. We head to the bottom of the fourth with the Rays leading 1-0. 
Randy Arozarena will lead us off. Arozarena comes in with five doubles, which is tied for second on the Rays. And he'll look at one pitch low and one pitch inside, so he's got himself a good hitter's count here. See if he can sit on one of these breaking pitches. He does, but he swings through it nevertheless. The sweeping curve makes its appearance again. Rosarena will follow away a 3-2 sinker. And then he'll sit back on another sweeping curve. Good contact here. That one's going deep to left off the very top of the wall. Just missed a homer. Alvarez collects it and throws it back into the infield. But Rosarena has got himself yet another double. And just missed putting the Rays up 2-0. One of the first times they've really squared up that curve today. And I don't think you can come any closer to hitting a home run to left field in this ballpark without actually doing it. So the Rays are in business here in the bottom of the second, or bottom of the fourth, excuse me, as Jan Gomes steps in. He'll take a curve outside. Gomes laces one down the left field line. That will be extra bases. A Rosarena comes around third. He will score. And I may have spoken too soon about extra bases because Alvarez throws into second, but Gomes just beats the tag. He's in safely. The Rays have back-to-back -back doubles here in the bottom of the fourth. And all of a sudden, Framber Valdez, who had the Rays looking completely lost at the plate, is giving up some really solid contact here. So Gomes does not run particularly well, but great hustle to get into second. And back-to-back -back doubles give the Rays a 2-0 lead. Harold Ramirez will step in. Ramirez singled in his first at-bat. Takes a slider inside. And then a curve outside. A curve, which up to this inning had been Valdez's most effective weapon, may be deserting him a bit here. Ramirez will chop a 3-2 sinker up the middle. Gomes is going to try to go to third, and that looked like a terrible decision. He's out all the way. Not totally sure what his thought process was there because he had to jump over the ball before he could even start running. So some poor base running there by the Rays. Bailing out a suddenly struggling Valdez. So Ramirez is safe at first, but the Rays lose their runner in scoring position with their first out of the inning. Ian Happ will stand in and follow away a sinker. Curve is low. Moving the count to two and two. Curve stays up, but Happ can only ground it to short. Mauricio handles it well. Over to Hensley at second, who relays to Abreu. So the Rays are out of the fourth but not before a pair of doubles to start the inning by Randy Rosarena and Jan Gomes doubles the Tampa Bay lead. It's 2-0 Rays heading to the fifth. Alex Bregman will lead us off and foul away the first pitch he sees. Good distance on that one. Would have been a home run if he kept it fair, but it was way foul. Stroman keeps the slurve up a little bit, but Bregman can only foul it away, so the count will stay at 2-2. Two and two. And he'll follow away the third straight pitch that he has seen. This one a sinker. Stroman mixing in all manner of pitches as he blows Bregman away with a fastball. Like we've talked about in the past, Stroman does not necessarily have the greatest velocity on his fastball, but when combined with all of his other pitches and the movement on his fastball itself, what appears on the radar as only 93 might look like 99 or 100 to some of these hitters as David Hensley fouls one away. Strowman has been masterful so far today, keeping the Astros off balance with all manner of pitches in his repertoire as a slurve is taken for a ball outside. Sinker on the 3-2 count is going to be line to center. Pretty good contact, but Margot tracks it well and hauls it in without issue for the second out of the fifth. Mauricio Dubon who turned a nice double play in the bottom of the fourth. We'll take a cutter for strike two. Thought about offering at a fastball that was inside, but wisely held off. 
So he'll work the count to two and two. Splitter's going to be chopped a second. Tough play for Hap. He fields and flips underhand to Diaz to get Dubon by a step or two. So the Astro shortstop is retired, and we will head to the bottom of the fifth with Tampa Bay still leading 2 nothing. While Stroman has been pitching really well, his pitch count is getting up there a little bit. So Kevin Cash has made his call to the pen and started warming up lefty Colin Poche and righty Sean Armstrong. Manuel Margot will lead us off here in the bottom of the fifth with a bloop into left center. That one's going to get down. So for the second consecutive inning, the Rays... Actually, third consecutive inning that they've had the leadoff man on. He's going, he's going, he's going. Right. Franco steps in and is going to take a called third strike, but Margot is going to successfully steal second. So Franco's at bat is not a complete waste. Sinker seemed to fool him, caught the inside corner, but Margot gets down to second. So the Rays will have another man in scoring position as Chris Bryant stands in, looks at a sweeping curve low and inside. While Bryant has dominated lefties historically this year, as you see the splits there, he's only hitting 158 against him. So I think Kevin Cash and the Rays staff is counting on historical precedent kind of taking hold as time goes on here. As Bryant takes another pitch inside, then falls away a sinker, so... The Rays left fielder will have a 3-2 count with one out here in the bottom of the fifth. A looping curve is going to be hit to right center. Let's see if it can get down. It cannot. Fantastic play by Durden out there making his major league debut. Robbed what would definitely be extra bases from Chris Bryant and probably would have rolled all the way to the wall and maybe been a triple. So Margot tags and heads from second to third. But... Spectacular Superman dive by Durden there to take away what appeared to be extra bases. So it'll fall on the shoulders of Nolan Arenado again. This was true in the bottom of the third when he came up huge with a two out single. Let's see if he can do it again. He'll fall away the first pitch he sees and then take a curve outside. So Arenado's also got himself into a payoff pitch as Valdez. Touches 100 pitches on the evening. 3-2 is line foul. Good sinker at the bottom of the zone. So we'll do it again. 3-2 to Arenado. Stays up and Arenado smokes it to left. But a bad luck conclusion to the inning for the Rays as Alvarez tracks it and puts it away. So two strongly hit balls with a man in scoring position. Both get recorded for outs. So we head to the top of the six. Tampa Bay still leading 2-0. Martin Maldonado will take an awkward cut at a fastball inside and swing right through it. So he is retired. Stroman continues his dominance to lead off the sixth. He too is approaching 100 pitches. That was his 96th of the day as Corey Jokes fouls one away. Let's see if Stroman goes right back to his upper fastball. He does, and Jokes is not a match for it. He swings through that one for the second out of the inning. Beautiful night here at Sunkiss Field. I know I have really enjoyed, as Brantley takes a fastball outside, enjoyed getting the chance to spend these Gorgeous Tampa Bay Knights outside rather than inside at Tropicana. As Brantley fouls one away. That's the ball. Splitter misses low. We can't ask for much more in terms of a ballpark ambience being right here on the water. Nice cozy park. As Stroman misses high, so Brantley works a walk. Tampa Palm Hotel, scenically overlooking the field in right field, I think. The architects of Mr. Kramer, who built this initially for horse racing, have done a fantastic job retrofitting it for baseball. As Jordan Alvarez strides to the plate, representing the tying run, so Stroman's got to be careful here. 2-2 two -two count to Alvarez, and right on cue, he's going to blast one to right. That baby's gone. 
Looks like it landed right on floor one of that Tampa Palm Inn, not quite in somebody's balcony. So Alvarez makes Stroman pay his ninth of the year. And as well as Stroman's been pitching, all of a sudden we got ourselves a tie game. Justin Dearden strides to the plate, looking for his first major league hit. He saved a run last inning with a spectacular diving catch. And that run looks even more valuable now as Stroman sits him down with a beautiful splitter. So the Astros, usual suspects, complete the damage. A two-out walk and a two-run homer by Alvarez sees us with a tie game here as we head to the bottom of the sixth. It's Astros two, Rays two. Framber Valdez's day is over. He'll give way to Jose Urquidy who has done his fair share of starting in the past, but is out of the bullpen right now for the Astros. Looks like Jason Adam is going to get going in the Tampa bullpen. Colin Pochet continues to throw as well. So with Stroman being right around 120 pitches, he, his day is probably done. Zyandi Diaz will lead off, take a fastball outside. So he's worked himself into a 3-1 count right away. Hunter Brown loosens in the Houston Three one to Diaz is way high. He checks his swing. Did he go? He did not. So good work there by the Tampa first baseman to hold off. And the Rays have the leadoff man on for the fourth consecutive inning, this time via the wall. Randy Rosarena will step in. He doubled in his last at bat. He'll look at a slurve for a called strike. And then check his swing on a curveball low and outside. So two and two is the count on the raised left fielder, who's actually designated hitting today. And a called third strike fastball dots the corner of the zone. Good pitch there. And tough for Rosarena to take that one. But Jan Gomes will step in. Swing through a 96 mile an hour fastball. Certainly a change of pace from the lack of heat that the Rays were seeing all day from Valdez. Valdez did an excellent job mixing his pitches and locations, but he's never going to be lighting up radar guns. Oh, beautiful 12 6 curveball. Catches the zone again. So for the second consecutive at bat, the Rays are caught looking. And it doesn't seem like they've been too willing to swing the twig at all so far against Urquidy. As Harold Ramirez will take a curveball low. Looks like he actually swung on that one, so the count is 2 and 2. Cutter misses outside. So we'll go full. This will also give Diaz a chance to be in motion from first here. He's off with the pitch, and the pitch is a slurve that misses way high. So Harold Ramirez is on base for the second time today. And Ian Happ has a two-out runner in scoring position opportunity now. Happ will take a fastball high. And then Half unloads. A circle change stays up. Ian Half is all over it. That one is going to hit a window in the Tampa Palm Hotel. That baby's gone. And Tampa takes a 5-2 lead here in the bottom of the six. 109 miles an hour off the bat to the tune of 415 feet. An absolute mammoth shot for today's second baseman for Tampa Bay. Happ with the distinctive, almost like shark style follow through on his no doubt shots. And that one it looks like it got to the second floor of that hotel out and right. And hopefully nobody was sleeping because that would have woken him up. Manuel Margot will step in as Hector Nerez takes over for Uquiti. 3 1 splitter finds his zone, so Margot will have himself a full count. Margot chops one up the middle. That one's going to get into center field. That's a base hit. Margot's on for the second time today. And he 
you wonder if he'll be in motion once again. Would not surprise me in the least bit. Margot takes a lead, and there he goes. He's off with the pitch. The pitch is going to be chopped to right field. Excellent play there by Hensley. He ranged onto the outfield grass, turned and threw to get Franco by a step. But the damage has been done. Ian Happ answers Jordan Alvarez's home run in the top half of the inning with one of his own. It's 5-2 Tampa Bay heading to the 7th. Stroman will indeed give way to the Tampa Bay bullpen in the form of Jason Adam. Adam comes in with a 4.05 ERA in six and two thirds innings. So he's pitched decently for a Tampa Bay bullpen that has endured some struggles. I think especially given the performance of the starting rotation that most would say that the Tampa bullpen has been to blame for a lot of the early season losses that the Rays have accrued. But they're a talented bunch, and as Jose Abreu flies one to right, I think Kevin Cash and company are always hopeful that a turnaround is imminent. And in any event, even if it's not, what's good for the Rays is, particularly as we get into the meat of the summer more, as Alex Bregman grounds out, Bullpens are often the cheapest and easiest thing to upgrade via the trade market. So if the Rays' bullpen struggles continue, I don't think that with their win-now mandate and league-shattering payroll that the Rays will hesitate to upgrade if they need to. David Hensley steps in and will foul a pitch away and then take a splitter low and outside. Two and two is the count on the second baseman. Fastball stays up and is fouled down the right field line out of play. Hensley's going to ground one to first. Diaz does not feel it cleanly but knocks it down. Adam covers it first. Relay over to the pitcher is in time. And it's stretch time here in Tampa Bay with the home team leading 5-2. to two. Looks like Pete Fairbanks will loosen in the Tampa bullpen. I wonder Kevin Cash might try and let Adam throw another inning. And if he gets in trouble, then he'll pivot and go to the pen. Hector Neris is out for his second inning of work. He only got one out in the bottom of the seventh. But we'll see if he's got a lengthy leash to stay in. Chris Bryant's going to ground pitch to first. Neris covers. A break you throw to him is in plenty of time. So one away here in the bottom of the seven. Nolan Arenado will step in and look at a fastball outside. Arenado has demolished lefties to the tune of a 400 average so far this year. Only 267 against righties, but... 267, when paired with a 400 split against the other side, really isn't too bad. 2-2 to Arenado stays up and inside. So we've had no shortage of full counts today, and that continues in this at-bat. Full count to Arenado. Slider stays up. Arenado smokes it to left. That's going to be over the head of Alvarez and get up against the base of the wall. Arenado's heading for second. Alvarez does throw really well, as mentioned, but throw is going to be offline. So the Rays third baseman cruises in with his sixth double of the year. Staying stride for stride with Randy, Randy Rosarena, who hit his sixth double earlier in this game, also to left field. So let's see if the Rays can get something cooking here in the bottom of the seventh with one out. Yandy Diaz hitting cleanup today. will stride to the plate next. Diaz walked in his last at bat and then came around to score on Ian Happ's go-ahead three-run homer. He'll take a fastball outside. Slider stays way up. Diaz hits it well, but can't quite straighten it out. Actually hit it off that scoreboard and left. But once again, we see ourselves with a full count. That splitter just dives out of the zone and Diaz cannot hold up so good pitch there by Neris for the second out of the inning 
Last hope for the Rays in the seventh is a Rosa Reina. Randy swings over a 2-1 fastball up in the zone. It was not anywhere near catching up with that 95 mile an hour heater. Next fastball is a little bit faster, but way higher, so Rosa Reina is able to hold off. And stop me if you've heard this before, but it's a 3-2 count. 3-2 Rosa Reina. He cannot hold up. Slider was way out of the zone. But today's designated hitter for the home team could not hold up. So the Rays are out of the seventh. A one-out double is stranded. We head to the top of the eighth. Tampa still leading 5-2. Mauricio Dubon steps in and swings over a splitter. So Adam, who indeed is coming out for his second inning of work, gets a quick strikeout to start off the inning. Martin Maldonado is next up. He is responsible for a bloop single, but not much else today. Count is full. And he works the count full. And the fastball is too much for him as he strikes out once again. Corey Jolks, last hope for the Astros eighth, is going to line the first pitch he sees to center. Margot has to take a couple steps back, but doesn't have to move much, and makes the play. So the Rays are out of the eighth. We'll head to the bottom half, with Tampa still leading 5-2. Blake Taylor will enter into the fray for the Astros. The lefty has pitched decently, has an ERA in the fours, and somewhat limited work so far this year. Looks like Pete Fairbanks is going to be scheduled to get the ninth. I suppose it's always possible that Adam could come back out for another inning. But we'll see, particularly if the Rays can add some runs. Jan Gomes will lead us off here in the sixth and foul away the first pitch he sees down the right field line. Gomes cannot hold off on a fastball up. Like Valdez, Taylor does not rely on velocity on his pitches for success so much as deception. And apparently he deceived Gomes just fine there because that pitch was nowhere near the zone, but the veteran catcher still swung through it. Harold Ramirez will be next up. He'll take a fastball for a called strike two, perfectly dotting the upper corner of the zone. Ramirez unloads, though, on the next pitch he sees. Four-seam fastball way too straight. And that one's in the palm trees and left. That baby's gone. So Harold Ramirez, his first homer of the year, he's been a thorn in the side for the Astros today. It's his second hit and third time reaching base. And a nice insurance run for the Rays. It's 6-2. I suppose that is one of the problems with relying on a fastball that doesn't get up into the upper 90s in velocity is if the hitter is waiting on it and your location's not good, then bad things can happen very quickly. And Ramirez made sure that he did not miss it. Ian Happel stand in next and ground the first pitch he sees to third. The throw by Bregman takes Abreu off the bag. He had a good amount of time there, so you wonder why he kind of haphazardly through so quickly. But that's going to go down as an E5, and Hap reaches base yet again. Manuel Margot will stride to the plate next. Margot has not been retired today. He walked once and has singled twice. So solid stuff out of the nine hole for the Rays. He'll take two fastballs low. Taylor does offer a slider, but is mainly a fastball guy. as a four-seam and then a running fastball. So far today, it looks like he's been keen to stick with the four-seam fastball. Margot is going to follow away a 3-1 running fastball. So that'll move the count full. We'll see if Hap is in motion here with one out. Looks like he is. Pitch is low anyways, so Margot continues to be impossible to keep off the bases for the Astros. And the Rays have two men on here and a rally cooking here in the bottom of the eighth. Wander Franco, 0 for 3 today, will step in. 
Ray's leadoff man has struggled a bit recently and is only hitting 222 this year with runners in scoring position. So you know that Tampa is hoping to get him going sooner rather than later. 2-1 to Franco is smoked to left center. Another fastball that did not fool anyone. That's a no doubt shot. The second one for the Rays this inning and a Fantastic sign for the fortunes of Franco as his third homer of the year breaks this game open. All of a sudden, it's 9-2 Tampa. I think this was the exact same scenario as the Harold Ramirez homer. A four-seam fastball that stayed very straight. We know the velocity is not going to be any higher than 93 or 94. And because Taylor doesn't throw much else, the Rays can really sit on that. So that is the end of the day for the Southpaw from Houston. Hunter Brown is going to relieve him. So we'll see if his fortunes fare better. Still only one out here in the eighth as Chris Bryant stands in and takes a slider for a called strike. It does look like as well that... Pete Fairbanks may have been scheduled to come in the game, but now Sean Armstrong is getting going. Chris Bryant's going to bloop the first pitch he sees into right. Durden has to run a long way and can't quite get there, so that's going to fall for a Texas League bloop single. With as many balls as the Rays have roasted recently, that can't be a welcome sign. As Arenado steps in, he's going to ground the first pitch he sees to left. That's a base hit. Arenado's got his third hit on the day, and all of a sudden, it's a feeding frenzy here in Tampa Bay. The Rays are now up to 12 hits on the evening. Yandy Diaz will step in, take a sinker outside. For all the hits we've had, especially as of late, Diaz has not partaken. He has gotten on base with a walk, but otherwise has been kept off the board as he takes a curveball for a called strike two. Another curveball misses outside, so we'll go full. Three two to Diaz is going to be a sinker that swung on and missed. 97 mile an hour sinker for Brown. So that's a tough pitch if it's thrown in a competitive spot. Diaz never really seemed to pick it up. So a big out for Houston to get there, and Rosarena is going to take a sinker right down the middle and pop it up. So Houston gets themselves out of the inning, but not before damage is done in the form of Harold Ramirez and Wander Franco teeing off. The Rays get two no-doubt shots and extend their lead to 9-2. Your attention, please. Now pitching the Looks like Pete Fairbanks will be coming in after all. There was the thought that Sean Armstrong would get the ninth, but Fairbanks wastes no time in greeting himself to Michael Brantley. 100 mile an hour fastball for a called strike three starts us off here in the ninth. Jordan Alvarez will be next up. Last time the imposing slugger stood in, he belted a two-run homer to tie the score. But since then, the Rays have answered with three homers of their own and seven runs. Alvarez takes a slider low, moving the count full. Let's see if Fairbanks just gives him the gas. He does, touching 101, but Alvarez is up to the task, fouling it away. Fastball again on 3-2 is going to be skied to left. Bryant heads over, settles under it, and makes the play for the second out of the night. So Justin Durden is the final hope for the Astros. Still looking for his first Major League hit in what has been an interesting debut day between the fireworks from various home runs and a spectacular play by Durden that has since been kind of nullified in its import. He's gonna fly one to left. Bryant settles under it without any trouble, makes the play, and Tampa in this matchup of 14 and 8 teams is going to draw first blood here in this series and win the opener by a count of 9 to 2. 
As always, thank you for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Your final from Tampa Bay, Rays 9, Astros 2. Have a beautiful evening. The final line score for our ball game tonight. For the victorious Rays, nine runs, 12 hits. No errors, they left nine runners on base. For the Astros, two runs on three hits, one error.